Good morning. That's not good. Wow. How was it in our first snowfall? It's so pretty. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Rebecca Bruin. I'm a member of the Climate Action Committee. And I just want to acknowledge the library for sponsoring, co sponsoring with the Climate Action Committee these events. Also, want to let you know that the events are being recorded on the YouTube channel. Eventually, they will be available so that people who are able to come to them can access them. The recording doesn't photograph you guys, it photographs you. So, um, also to let you know, there are four more educational sessions before we uh, take a break in the summer. Uh, next March is building codes, the stretch versus stretchier code. You'll hear more about it. Landscaping uh, in April, solar in uh, May, and in June we'll be having a session on um, what does it mean to be a green community in Toronto. So all that information is on the desk. Uh, just want to briefly introduce the other members who are here. Uh, Carol Harris is our chair. Hi. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and we also have a volunteer. We have two volunteers, but volunteer who's here is Georgia, Georgia O'Neill. That's my name. Georgia O'Neill. <laughs> and so we're we're looking for members and volunteers. And if you are interested at all, you can talk to Carol. Or she has a little tab. You can pull a piece of paper up there in the booth. So today's topic is electric vehicles. Um, we have the good fortune of having five rural residents here who have jumped into the world of electric vehicles and are here to share their experiences. I'll ask each one of them to introduce themselves. We did note on their name cards what kind of vehicle, should you have any questions and want to mingle afterwards and ask about the specific uh, car. Um, what we'd like to do is just hold off on questions until the end and then be informal. I wanted to break this up into kind of two sections. One is how did they get to the point of buying it? What prompted them? What were the factors that drove them to finally buy a vehicle? Um, and the second would be about how has it changed your life? What are the challenges? So, that being said, um, how you made the decision? Why that particular car? Did you take advantage of incentives or rebates? And uh, were the dealerships helpful? And I'm, my own personal question is, are you required to register as an EV evident motor vehicles? So those are just some of mine. Jen Shen. Okay, well, I bought a Tesla. Well, I didn't actually buy it, I leased it. I didn't know if I really liked it or not, so I leased it for three years. It's also it was a pretty expensive car. I got the Y model. At the time that I was purchasing, it was a $70,000 car. Better, I could train in my old car. They gave me some credit for that, pretty, pretty good credit, and then um, I just pay a monthly fee now. Um, I did it just for the obvious reason, which is to try to help the environment. I was particularly struck to learn that a large percentage of what interferes with our lungs. Uh, what creates health problems for people comes from cars, and that with the electric vehicles, you go along with that. So, um, so that was my motivation. And uh, we also have a lot of solar on our roof, so I was motivated to take advantage of that. Uh, we put on some more just to compensate for the electric car. And um, the process was interesting. Uh, I ordered the car online without talking to anyone, except my friends. I had two friends who owned them. And I, if it hadn't been for my friends, I don't know if I would have. I'm not the most tech savvy person, so I don't know if I would have made the process through. But um, I, they told me to have faith and just go ahead and order the car, so I did <laughs> online. And then finally, like right before, a week before I was going to get the car, someone called me from Tesla and set up the pickup. I had to go up to Norwell, I think is the closest dealership. And uh, I drove up there and it was 
it was just weird because it's sort of they didn't tell me the location of the dealership and it was hard to find online. <laughs> Very strange. Anyway, so I got there, and then uh, they took my car, no questions asked. They put me in the Tesla, and they said, now, while we're doing your registration, just um, watch these videos that are on your video, because you know, the Tesla has like a video screen. Watch these videos to learn how to use the car. So I watched the videos, and then the woman came out, gave me my license plates, which were not EV license plates, by the way. Um, I don't, I think maybe there were, they, the state didn't have more at that time. I don't know why that happened. I think they're required now. Yeah. That's I what I was told. I don't know why. I, I, but again, like, I didn't notice that they weren't EV license plates. And I asked her a couple of questions. She told me those. And then I just <laughs> went out into the world. It was <laughs> very different driving experience. Um, you. First of all, it has really fast pickup, so look, and you press into the car, and boom, and then, uh, you know, all the little gizmos, and you've got the screen here telling you stuff. It was a lot to learn, but it, initially it felt very, you know, I kind of got it, and I had, as I said, I had a couple of friends who showed me a couple of things, and I was really enjoying it, and then I had a couple of little snafus that annoyed me. Um, one was, had to do with, the only device I had to get into the phone was my, the car was my phone, and I wasn't using the cards correctly. So you get, you have, you can do it on, with your phone, you can have a fob, which you have to buy, or they give you these two cards, and they're programmed to open the car, but I wasn't using it correctly, so I wasn't opening the car, and I had locked my phone away somewhere, and I had a terrible time. Into the car, but um, I that passed, and um, the other thing happened was I backed into something, which seems like it should be impossible. So there's like 80 cameras around the car. But somehow that happened. Um, so that was really annoying. And then I'm not laughing. Oh, no, you can laugh because it's ridiculous. And now, then I found out to get the car fixed, they recommend you go to a Tesla repair shop, which are all off Cape. So one thing I'll say about the Tesla is, um, only one on the Cape, really, to get, you have to leave the Cape to get any service. However, but you only need service once a year. Yes, but <laughs> if you happen to need, but I did call because of the key issue. And I said, you know, I need somebody. So they sent someone out to my house. I did have to wait about six weeks, but I <laughs> sent someone out to my house. And they, I've never had to use the roadside assistance, but they say that's good. I would say, um, did I answer all the questions for part one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. Oh, one more questions for part one? Okay, whatever, what, if what essentially what brought you to oh, okay. like buying it and... Okay, I had a uh, Subaru Forester that I don't know how I came to buy it because I never liked the car. And a friend of mine was driving it and put it, really bashed the part of the car in. And it was $1,800 to fix, and he's very poor, so he couldn't pay for it. And I just decided, I'm just going to get rid of it and get an electric car. And I guess my feeling about electric cars is that I, I don't have children, I never wanted them, but I would like for the next generation to have a world of them. So that was quite a lot of it. And I came to buy the Kia EV6 because I did a lot of research online about what the best cars were. And that was, you know, the Tesla was the best, but then this was the this was the next best and it was much less expensive than Tesla, although it's still pricey. Um, I was not happy with my salesman. I mean, I asked him a lot of questions. Like I said, oh, I'm going to miss them. I can't just put my hand on the, on the door handle and it'll open. He said, yeah, unfortunately, they don't have that. <laughs> they do. You know, there was just so many things he gave me bad information about. So um, I would say if you're going to if you're going to buy a Kia, find a different dealership. Because it's in South Falmouth. So by the time you get there, you might as well go off the page. Because uh, it's a long drive. Um, fortunate thing is they only, unless something goes wrong, um, you only get service once a year. Um, and I love the pickup. And what I really love is how quiet it is. It's so much, you know, when you're on a highway or something. 
Um, you want to talk about problems yet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 but take advantage of any rebates or incentives. Um, I've got all the material together, and it's going to my account to pay my taxes. So um, I, you do you do need a you know a bunch of material, and the dealership was help, helpful with supplying me that. Um, let me think. Um, rebates. Yeah, I guess it's bright, bright yellow, and I, I really wanted a silver car, but by the time I got down there to test drive it, both of them had been sold, and all that was left was a curly white or this bright yellow one, and I thought, hey, you're 74 years old, why don't you buy something you could have bought when you were 20? <laughs> <laughs> the bad thing is, is that I, I can't go anywhere that people don't know I'm there. Or <laughs> <laughs> really jumps out. Um, I have a Volkswagen ID4. Uh, got it in July, and similar to everybody else, you know, I have solar panels on my roof, and I just have loved them. And um, I haven't had an electric bill since I installed them. And um, I overbuilt my solar panels for a couple of reasons, and one was thinking about the future if I had an electric car, so I had the capacity. I knew I had the capacity to have an electric car, not have it max out my solar panels. It's close now, but um, so that was the reason. And also, just I, I felt like it's something I could do. I could afford to do it. And I think it's important. And um, so that was the primary reason. I did a ton of research on the web uh, before I settled on my car. Um, and uh, the reason I chose the Volkswagen is it uh, wasn't a Tesla, first of all. <laughs> um, I did not want a Tesla for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> and I've had Volkswagens before and loved them. Um, and Volkswagen is the second largest EV seller in Europe, and if you include the Volkswagen Group, which is Audi and Porsche and all that, it is the largest manufacturer of EVs in Europe. So I knew they had a lot of experience. Um, I loved the car. I was able to test drive one twice. The Volkswagen dealership is in Hyannis, and they were great. It was actually one of the best car buying experiences I've ever had. Oh. And I'm 60, and I've had a number of cars. So, <laughs> um, and I ordered it online, which was totally weird. And but then I was able to go test drive it, and they said, "Come test drive it as much as you want." And um, I waited about mm, eight months for the car, uh, and then when I picked it up, they said, I had someone sit in the car with me for an hour and a half and wow. go over all of the oh. things. And, <laughs> you know, um, I think your experience is yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I was grateful for that. So um, it's super fun to drive. It doesn't, you know, if I don't, if you read the reviews, I don't agree with them. I think it's a really great car. Um, it's like, it's what they call a transition EV in the sense that it has some of the features of a gas car in the sense like many of the EVs have a screen over here and that's all you have. Whereas you have a cluster still in front of you that has information which I like. Um, so I'm not looking over like this all the time. Um, it's all wheel drive. They have a, a, a you know a two wheel drive version. Um, did I answer all the questions? Um, I installed a home charger. Uh, do you want us to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, I think once we go through the what it, what it brought you here, we can go back and then spend a lot of time talking about the okay. challenges and um, the goods and the bad. You know, I love the car. And did um, you do incentives for your day Yeah, so I leased as well. And I was encouraged to lease by a couple people, including the dealership, that said, you know, the technology is evolving so quickly that in three years, you're going to want a new one of these because it's going to be even better. And so um, they encouraged me to lease. Actually, Volkswagen at that time had an incentive where you got the $7,500 credit, but applied to the lease. So um, it, uh, you could benefit it from that credit on, in the lease as well. The other thing about Volkswagen, which is, is good, is that they are also a co-owner of Electrify America, which is a, char a fast charging network. And with the car, you get three years of free supercharging at any electric wow. car in America, wow. which there aren't a lot yet, but I think there will be more. 
Um, and it also has three years of maintenance included in, in it as well. And mm -hmm. so the ownership cost is really low. Um, it's an investment up front, but the ownership cost, particularly because there's really not much service there. Um, so I, I really love the car. What is your range? Uh, my range, well, this is something I think we'll probably all talk about. It depends what the temperature is outside. <laughs> um, but, you know, 80%, I get about two, if it's, you know, regular sort of 70 degree weather, I get about 240 miles at 80%, and about 300 if I charge it to 100%. Yeah, so it's pretty good. That's it. I does it go down to all the, mine goes down to 150. Mine goes down to about 190, yeah, at 80%. These are things they don't tell you about when you buy the car. Exactly. <laughs> right. um, I have I have a hybrid. I have a plug-in hybrid. I have a Volvo Plus Country plug-in hybrid, and um, it says I get twenty miles on pure electric, but um, I never have to fill a car with gas. I get about thirty-six miles to the gallon. Uh, it also recharges itself. You there's different settings that you can put it on. You can drive hybrid so that it switches over to gas. Um, you can do pure um, pure electric, and you can do uh, charging. So you put charging on it, and it charges the electric, but your gas mileage goes down. I came to buy this car because uh, my old car was dying, and we were getting ready to take a road trip to Florida, and had to get a new car, and I knew I wanted to move in the direction of an electric car. But I also knew that, um, that we have a place up in the middle of nowhere in Maine, and I knew that an electric car wouldn't get me there. Um, so I needed to have something that would get me there, and I needed to know that I was safe on Route 9. <laughs> um, so, I chose the hybrid and figuring that I would have this car for a while and by the time I needed a new car, that problem would be solved. Um, I did not have a good experience with the dealership at all. Uh, the salesman clearly knew nothing about it. Um, technicians there are better, but they're hard to get on the phone. Um, it's a big learning curve when you leave a pure gas car to going to an electric. It's, you know, I, I'm not a tech savvy person either. Clearly, I can't turn to my wife for help. So <laughs> we, um, I spent a lot of time just saying, I don't understand this car. But now I know this car. I love this car. I would highly recommend it. There was a guy who was driving, before I got my car, there was a guy who was driving one around Truro. I haven't seen him recently. And I stopped and grilled him because I've always been a Volvo person. So um, I grilled him about it and asked him how he liked it. He loved it. And you know, I, I always have felt so safe in my Volvos. So but you know, the thing that I'm really well aware of as we're talking is that purchasing an electric car is for the privileged. You know, it's because you know we we have solar that costs. We have we put a we put a charger in that cost, you know. So, you know, that's a little disturbing that you know only the privileged can really help along this route. But you know, that's that's how I came to buy my car, and I would have gone all electric except for a place in me. All right. Um, yeah, I. Got to well, we overbuilt the solar too, thinking of um, getting an electric car at one point. Um, it was actually my wife who was spearheading that, and um, she had had Priuses all along. She has a Prius now, gets 56 miles. To the um, then, yes, yeah, so we haven't had an electric bill since we put that in December of 15, and we've switched over to um, heat pumps the mini splits in the house. We have um, a solar battery instead of a generator for when the power goes out. We have a solar assisted hot, um, solar assisted heat pump water heater that there's only two 
on the outer cape, the um, inspectors brought friends <laughs> to see it. Um, they were like, yeah, it looks good. Um, so it, it kind of just kind of fed off itself. You know, we just kind of kept going to the next thing, going to the next thing, figuring out, do we want to generate it? No, look at the problems of the guy next door. Um, so the experience of buying the Tesla, I picked it up two years ago Monday. Um, I had wanted a Tesla. I just saw them. It was kind of like a dream. And I, I'm not the privileged. I'm a blue collar worker. Um, life things came along, and I said, I'm buying what I want. And I, um, I went up. Well, I looked at it online and stuff. And like I said, before, my brother was like, you don't need to start getting um, speeding tickets at your age. Um, why don't you look at some of the other manufacturers? And I said, Mike, they're combustion engine you know, manufacturers. And now they're trying to get into electric where, yeah, I know he's a, Elon mm -hmm. is not my favorite, but he's a computer guy and he put the shell of the car on as the kid that helped me get it said, have you ever driven a supercomputer before? <laughs> and I said, no. Um, you can order them online. He, that's what he did. He had a computer screen there. We sat down and he says, OK, do you want the 19-inch tires or the 20? Boom. Do you want the white, the blue, the gray, the black, or the red? But that, And then they said, um, it will probably be about eight weeks till you get it. And the next day I got a phone call. We found one. And um, when do you want to pick it up? We have Thursday you can pick it up. And I said, uh, the check won't have cleared by then. How about Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanted to pick it up today because today's Lisa's birthday. So um, I thought, and the plate is 218. It would have been very nice. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, I took it for a test drive. It is different in that it drives like a go-kart. Um, it's an accelerator panel, so as much as you're pressing on the gas, you, you're picking up speed, not the gas, the accelerator. And then when you let your foot off, it slows down. If you take your foot off, it stops. Um, so that's a little, like I, I go to Boston for the doctors, the dentists and stuff. I drive up there and back, and I never touch the brake pedal. Because you just, you better stop at the light, you just take your foot off, slow down. Um, I absolutely love the car. Uh, you can always play with the screen, and it, all of the tutorials are in there. It, if you park, there's YouTube and Hulu and all of that, because you can camp in it. It has a camping setting on the, um, the climate. It also has a dog setting. So if you have a dog, it says that it's 68 degrees in the car, don't break the window. It um, will keep the dog cool. Um, yeah, I just love everything about it. Every time I talk to somebody, somebody told me about the, um, the toy box that you can play the music outside the car. Um, that was one of the recalls because I guess you could do it while you were driving. <laughs> <laughs> so there have been two recalls since I've had it. Both of them happen over the airways. And you get in the morning and it says, do you want to learn more? And I put it in drive, and if it moves, I go, I'm good. <laughs> I don't care what you did. <laughs> um, that's how all the updates come, too. When I was leaving, they said, um, You'll get 300,000 to a million miles on this. So I figure it's my last car. So um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I talked to Rebecca because she's thinking of going to a, a plug-in hybrid. I said, that's kind of like dipping your toes in the water. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, you're still paying the maintenance on a combustion engine. It, you know, you've got the coolant system. You don't in an electric. You have an exhaust system, so the converter and the tailpipes and the muffler. You don't have. You don't have to do tune-ups. There's no oil changes. There's no. 
there's brakes and suspension and um, tires. And everything else comes while you're sleeping. So I love it, and I highly recommend it. <laughs> when you go to Boston in the winter, can you go around trip without finding a charger? Yeah, I also, um, since the solar on the house built a garage, so the garage is like 50 something degrees, and I have, yeah, I get, I go up and back. So why don't we talk about now what it's like, because these are the kinds of questions I think a lot of people have. What, what, how has it changed your life? How, what have you had to do to adjust for the problems? Can we ask the cost? The co sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think mine was around 60000 How many years ago, when you talk about the uh, It'll be a year in May. And how many? Around 60. This is like a, a limited edition. This was the only car I could buy. It was, it's like a limited edition, and it has more bells and whistles than the others, which I can't stand having because they're too confusing. So I prefer a, a basic model. So I do have an interest, and I think everybody does, um, just the question is, how, how, where do you charge up? How, how does that work? Where do you, is your life, do you have to go, how do you get to Boston? And, I'll, I'll go with that, it's just so we can contrast to the two Tesla owners. So um, I, I have something called range anxiety. And <laughs> as a, is that a term? That's a term that has to do with when you get an electric, when you get an electric car, you suddenly realize like, okay, I have this many miles, and um, am I gonna run out of miles before I get home? And, and as has been mentioned, my car gets 320 miles on a full charge. They recommend you don't charge it fully all the time. It's better for the battery, so I charge 80%, and I get like 270 or something, 260, whatever. And then um, in the winter, I get, if I charge it to 260, I probably get maybe 210 because of the weather, everything you do extra, the heat, the radio, you know, the radio, whatever, that all draws from the battery. And with this place we have up in Maine, there's a road, there's a, a long stretch of about an hour where you're going up a big hill, down a big hill, up a big hill. And there have been electric cars that have had to be towed because the people didn't factor in the extra energy to go up that hill and down that. So you have to factor those things in. I love my car. We do have a charger at home. It's not a fast charger, but I just charge it over. It charge takes about four hours to charge it. Tesla has chargers, superchargers, all over the place. Though on the Cape, the closest one is Orleans. There's one at the Sagamore Bridge. Um, and those, there used to be a bank of them at PB Belongerie, and you took them out. I don't know why. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, they're trying to get one in Crocs now, but I have a charger at home, so it doesn't matter. However, when I drove to Boston, I get nervous and I charge it in something Boston because I get nervous and I'm like, I don't know if I can make it all the way home and I don't want to. You can always stop at the bridge. Yes, that's I true. had an experience. Um, we went to a friend's 80th birthday party in Carlisle. Now, I've never, before that, I had never been to Carlisle in my life. But Route 3, kind of. Yeah. And um, so I used the navigation, took me right to the house, but it's very dark. It's kind of like Truro. There's no street lights and trying to find a street sign or anything. So I put in, take me home. And it wouldn't take me past the Sagamore Bridge. Oh. Because that was where I would have to definitely get some charge before I went home. So I stopped at the Sagamore Bridge 15 minutes just to get enough charge to get me home. I think I'm just getting used to that range issue, and I just think it takes time. Some people are more uh, savvy than others. So. <laughs> but I would say basically I really like the car, um, except for the range issues. So I don't, so just my personality, I like the car as like sort of like freedom. And, you know, if I have to think about where I'm getting charged, if I'm going 300 miles, it makes me a little nervous. But I think it's just a learning curve. Well, the other thing is if you put in a destination, it will show you oh, all, show the you all the supercharges all along, and you can get off any exit. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So I'll get you. Yeah. 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 But the supercharger um, built the garage, but I didn't have, I bought the car and didn't have the charger in yet. Um, went to Orleans, it was 45 minutes to do a full charge. So say I've driven 300 miles and it's time for lunch. So you have lunch and you charge the car and you go another get the full day in and charge it at the end of that day and you're ready for the next day. So talk uh, about that because I think that's a question I've seen people sitting in their cars plugged in. Waiting. Well, the other thing is then, Tesla charges you, if you're not charging, they charge you like a buck fifty a minute, minute for minute. sitting there while it's not. So you oh. want to be in there when the charge is going to end or oh, you want to be charged. Yeah. Well, no, because I know over in Ireland they, they have some charges and people are using them as parking mm -hmm. spots. Yeah. Yeah. They put the thing in and they go so away for the day and nobody gets charged. Yeah, so I can open this up. Sure. So, so, so I just let me make a comment on that. I'm going to make a comment. Because yeah. the, the charging stations, and you, Rebecca knows this maybe better than I do at this point, the charging stations, there's the physical charger, and then when you get to public chargers, there's also um, how you pay for the charge. Some places you pay, some places are free. Um, but the owner of the charger has the option to start charging you once you're full. So it's to try to encourage people to get out of the space. I know P-Town, for example, and their public parking is struggling with this because people will come in, go to the charger. Stay all day. Stay all day. Right. It takes them, you know, a couple of hours to charge, but they're holding that space mm -hmm. for eight hours. So one of the strategies right now is to start charging you extra if you won't back, you know, leave the space. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to understand, and that's software driven. That's the that's based on the decision of the person who owns the charger. Some, some people tell you if you don't. Yeah, sometimes. Charge. So I, I just want to say, people, this is all still being figured out. Like, what's the right way to manage that? So you'll see different places have different situations or ways of handling that. But it is, I think, a, a matter of everybody figuring it out and what's the best way to handle it. I think, I, as I may, Paul had a unique uh, situation at Whole Foods in my hands. So there's something called getting iced. I don't know if people know this term. I did not know it until. So getting iced is when you show up at a charging station and an internal combustion engine car ICE mm -hmm. is in the spot, and um, and that sometimes happens. And also, what can happen as well is you can show up at a charging station and it's out of order. A lot. And so, fortunately, they have all these apps now that you can look at where all the charging stations are, and many of them will say it's available, not available. They'll list the, if there are four outlets there are, they will say, well, two of them are in use at this time. And so there's there's a lot of information, but the things, it really requires planning. I think that's the yes. thing. For example, like if I know I'm going to Boston, I need to charge my car to 100%. So when I go to bed that night, I have to make sure that I change the setting in the car and plug it in so that it is at 100% when I wake up. It's not like you can get up in the morning, get in the car, say, oops, I'm about to get gas, let's go to Combi's. You know, it doesn't work that way. And so it just requires a lot of planning. But uh, the Tesla, anyway, it's on your phone. You go to a uh, <coughs> schedule, and you can, well, yeah. charging. And you can you do just, that on. The, I've done that in bed. Like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that, and put it up to 100%, and then have it ready to go at a certain yeah, time, which I did today. The car is warm, the seat warmer is on, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the steering wheel warmer is on, and the batteries are preconditioned, and away you go. It's, a, it's oh my god. I, I, love it. <laughs> I had an experience in, I guess it was October, it still wasn't really cold, and a, a very old close friend was terminally ill, and I had to drive to Philadelphia. And I looked up where the chargers were in advance. And I got to almost all of them, and they weren't they, they weren't working. Um, and you know, so I finally got enough where when I got to Pennsylvania, I had ten miles of range left. Mm -hmm. And I went to the key, I called the Kia dealership in this town, and they said I could come and park there. That they had fast chargers. First of all, they weren't fast. Second of all, there were cars parked in front of them. 
So I had to call friends to come pick me up so I could leave my car there. So the next day I find out they're not fast chargers. It would take 10 hours for the car to charge. So then I had to rent a car. Only car left on the lot was a Mercedes, so it cost me $190. And it, it took me something like 11 hours to get to Pennsylvania because every time I stopped. So the next time I had a little bit longer trip, I not only looked them all up, but I called. I called each company to say, I'm going to stop at this place. Can you tell me that this is in service? And that worked. But I, uh, I don't know. I, I think I didn't do enough homework before I bought this car, and I think I, I, I bought prematurely, because I think I don't, I don't really feel like the infrastructure's there. Plus, Tesla charges a lot more for charging than most of these other companies do. So you go somewhere, and there's all these empty Tesla chargers on the other side of the lot, and the Teslas are sitting in, in the universal charging places. The reason is because they're paying less money than Tesla charges them. What does it cost to charge? Let's say I don't even know. I just I look at my, my credit card every month and it doesn't seem so bad. So <laughs> the last time I charged mine fully, it was eighteen dollars. Oh, I've never heard of that one. And that's three hundred miles. But that was a pretty much a full charge. Maybe I was at fifty. So and full I, tank, yeah. I think twelve dollars is the most I've ever paid. And also, every every town out here has chargers, and I don't know if all of them do, but I know that because of some money that East Ham got that it's free, but it's a slow charger. I, when I first, I didn't get my, my home charger installed that early, and I figured no problem, there's one at Town Hall, I'll just walk up and down, and then they got a vapor system in the back of my knee, so I couldn't walk up and down the hill to Town Hall. So I had to get, fortunately I'm having construction done, so my contractor would, would take me up and back. <laughs> Um, one of the things I was wondering about was how do, um, how do how does it get enforced, especially if a business has a charging station? Somehow, be, be you dental school, I see cars that have unplugged all the time, and, and there are electric cars, but they're not even plugged in. I go to the attendant because it says they will be towed, and I was, I had been in there for four hours and I came out and, it was, and they were still there. They yeah. don't they don't enforce. I think that's a big learning curve for people who own these charging stations that they have to have, take some responsibility if they can't charge extra. Or there's too many. Well, that's right. Right. They have they have right. 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 You're going to get a big bill if you're there for or if you're get if you're iced. That that um. Well, that's that I don't know how they would do ice. because they don't have their credit card. Exactly. 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 And the next car was parked. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you yeah. went and you asked the Whole Foods to um, announce yeah. the yeah. person please yeah. move their car. Yeah. Um, you know, Electrify America has the same thing where if you sit in the charger, like it gives you like a 20 minute grace period or something like that. Most of the superchargers do now and other charging stations where you will get charged if you sit there longer than your grace period. So there, it's an incentive for you to get off of the charger. Yeah, I have no grace period. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, the, the, I, I must have uh, memberships to seven or eight. Every time you go to a new a place where there's a new company, you have to go online and get an account with them. And it's like, you know, imagine if you're filling up with gas, and every single gas station, you needed a different car to be able to fill your tank. So it'd be nice if that got to be more universal. You don't just put a credit card in. There's a few places you can do that, but not that many. It's an app on your phone, all of that app, and an app. And the thing is, they're smart. So you show up at the ch at this at this particular charging station. You open that. You see it's a, um, a you know like Fry America or ChargePoint is another really big one. You open the app and it says, "Oh, you're here." Yeah. And this charger is open. Are you using this one? And you just oh. literally plug it in, and it knows what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, one of the things I think we've recognized is that at, to get your car fixed, there are not a lot of people who are technicians yet. And I believe, if I remember, Carol, there was some discussion about building programs at the tech school so to teach the young. 
Yeah, I believe, I think it's Cape Cod Community College has developed programs to train new folks um, who are coming in to learn to, learn to be mechanics on it and cover electric cars and to retrain existing mechanics so they don't have to learn all the basics. They have to learn how to service electric cars. So there was a program, I think, that they were developing about two years ago. I think that's in process, but I'm not sure. But the thing is, is that helps the Cape economy as well. Um, because we know, you know, jobs here are difficult. There's not a lot of jobs that are full time all year round, that sort of thing. So this, the training and retraining um, supports the local economy, supports younger people, especially getting into a new industry. Um, and it supports the, you know, the move towards electric vehicles. It's not 100%, but I think it's, you know, a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different avenues to get this done. There's the chargers, there's the vehicles, there's the people who service the vehicles, there's all the software behind this. Um, and it, you're in a period now of change. Um, so it, things are going to, are changing rapidly. Um, for example, the incentives change about every year, two or three. They're not, you know, if you bought a car three years ago, the incentives that you can get now with the rebates are, could be different. Um, Better or worse? You, it have to it, you know, I can't really answer that because, it, like I said, it changes frequently. I think it's kind of when I bought mine, there's, there's a lot now with the new, yeah, there's a lot now with the new federal right. funds that are being right. released now, but the state also does stuff, and then there's private you know, non-profit organizations that are helping. And I also heard that if they're, if they're ma not manufactured in the United States, that the incentives are much lower. I believe that's true. That's yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Well. Yeah. Okay. So the <coughs> point is, check, you, know, you, know, you, you really have to, yeah. to check that for oh, yourself at the time you're buying the vehicle. Oh, or yes, I guess something good. Yeah, Paul's got a little long day on it. I don't want to time, but there was a great article in the New York Times about two weeks ago about what you can do for the environment, and, and one of the sections is on electric cars. Yeah, has other things. It's a great article. But what in the new bill, the Biden bill, is that um, in order to stimulate the United States economy, that the car has to be assembled in the United States, and certain components also have to be from the United States, and. Unfortunately, right now, that limits as the number of cars that are available that meet those requirements. And I, the, the ones that have models that do are Audi, BMW, Ford, GM, Nissan, Rivian, Chrysler, Jeep, Tesla, VW, and Volvo, but not Polestar, which is the electric make for um, Volvo. What's great about it is it's a 7500 tax credit, but it also, for, it can only apply if you spend 80000 or less for vans, SUVs, or pickups. And the max is 55000 for all other cars. Um, and starting in 2024, you can actually apply that tax credit to the sticker price of the car. You can't do that in 2023, but you can in 2024. And there'll be more cars that will be sort of assembled in the United States that meet these criteria. They have to be certified. But there's also another great website where you can go to and you can enter in the VIN number of a car to see if it does qualify. Oh. So even though it may not be listed on the list, if you enter in the VIN number, it will tell you whether it qualifies or not. Right. The other thing that's cool about it is that there will also be a $4,000, there is a $4,000 tax credit for used electric vehicles. And so um, it has to be two years or more older, and that the value of it has to be less than I think, uh, what was it? I can't remember what it was, but, and then there are also income requirements. Yes. So you have to be uh, at a certain income level in order to qualify for the tax incentives as well. So uh, when you were talking earlier about equity, yeah. um, you know, and I can afford this, but I'm, you know, I have a decent income or had it and can afford it. it, to Paul's point, there are incentive programs for people under a certain income level. So there's, I think this is just the start of, of trying to get to equity on, on some of these things. There, if, if anybody's on Facebook, there's um, electric vehicle owners of New England page, and now there's a Cape Cod electric vehicle owners page. 
And I, I wish I'd known about those before I bought an electric car because there's so much information. Yes. Um, I apologize if you've already talked about this, but I've been wondering in terms of going electric, whether to go hybrid so that I'm still having an impact on the climate issues and the fossil fuel use, but I don't have to worry so much about the charging station. Because part of my situation is we like half time on the Cape and half time in Cambridge, and in Cambridge we live on the third floor, there's no way, to, we don't have a driveway, there's no way to charge there but a charging station. There's a yeah. charging home. So anyway, I just want to in Central Square. Yeah, no, I, 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 get, I get that. Okay. But I, my partner is like, oh, no, you know, we need to have certainty. And uh, uh, but you know, I just wonder how, how much of how much of an impact do you think the hybrids have versus the fully electric? Well, Janie, can you, I, I have a fully hybrid, and, and I have a, you know, it's an SUV, it's loaded, it's got all the bells and whistles and more than I need, and uh, I get about 36 miles to a gallon, which is better than my old one, which was gas, and I got about 24, 25, so for yeah. me it's a much larger impact. I mean, with a tank of gas and a full charge, I get a range of 520 miles. So I think if you drive, if you drive, most of your driving is local. Yeah, yeah. you're going to get a lot more benefit from yeah. the Absolutely. electric and a, and a hybrid than you would if you do a lot of long, yeah. longer distance driving. The so only long distance we really do is like from here to Boston. Well, and with my car, when you're doing long distance, you can actually charge your battery. Right. So that's while you're awesome. driving. Yeah, but your gas mileage goes down. Yeah. And, and then I had one other question, which was, which is, do you have any reservations about all the issues around the metals, the, the extract, like this deep sea yeah. mining they're talking about it's doing the for batteries, yeah. and yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know. Yes, yeah, right, that's, that, and, yeah, so uh, I want to, Make a point that all of the green things you can do, um, it, it, at some point it gets down to an individual decision about where you can flex and where you can't. Um, I just got a hybrid that is not a plug in because I have family in um, central Maine and I have family in northern Vermont. And I see them, you know, several times a year. Um, we do some travel like up to Western Mass, and for us it just wasn't practical. Um, and plus the expense of the car at the time that I bought mine. So that was a decision we made. Our next car will definitely be all electric, but we wanted, for us, it made sense to do that step along the way. Um, so it's it's not just, it, it, we can't, I don't think anyone here can give you an exact mm -hmm. answer because you have to look at your circumstances, what you can afford, because there is a huge range of, of differences. Prices are coming down. Um, you know, you have to factor in all of that. You know, what, how how easily can you get a, a car charged? Um, for us, we're a two-car household, so we could make that first step into uh, a hybrid. Um, but we weren't willing, because of these other factors, to make that first step straight into electric. And only saying that, I'm not happy with my decision. I would have rather gone all electric, but because of a multitude of, of components, that's a decision we could make now. Um, fully expecting that a few years from now, we're going to need to get our next car, that will go all electric. But so it just... I mean, one factor, too, is you go all electric, electric your electric could still be coming from a gas-fired plant, a coal-fired plant, a hydroelectric dam that's led not to, you know, that's had a big, big impact as well. So that, that's, that's part of the reason, too, that I wonder about. The so there are choices you can make hybrids. on your electricity. If you yes. get your electricity yes. from Eversource, um, Rebecca, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you can choose where you're getting your electricity from. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to have all green generated yeah. energy. Yeah. Community solar farm. Yeah. 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 
And so gonna, the, it, it, it's, it is, there's a, because we're in the middle of this sea change of how we do things on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not clear. There's no, I wish I had a map I could hand to all of you. I really, really do. Um, but I can't tell you how much it will cost because it depends on your, your factors. All those things are considerations, and I think everybody's just making the best decision they can now. And 10 or 15 years from now, I think it will be a lot simpler. If, if you're a two car household, I have friends in Wall Street who do this. One, they have one car that's a Prius, and the other car is all electric. So when they go on longer trips, they drive the Prius. You know, and if I ever win the lottery, that's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. the second car. Um, yeah. and, and the other thing you ask about, like the materials and the manufacturing process, um, that's a tough one. You know, mm -hmm. lithium is a, is a tough element. Um, they're finding more resources for, but there's a lot of politics about where the lithium exists in the world and what countries are extracting it and how they're doing the extraction and how safe is that. Um, you could torture yourself with this stuff. So I think That's my, my, my <laughs> answer is you do the best you can at the time with the information yeah. that you have. Um, and that's that's great because you're thinking about it and you're considering all the different aspects and you're making decisions, but you also have to make a decision what, what's best for you, your family, you know, your household. So I would say go hybrid if you're, if you're um, on the fence. But if you're worried about the batteries and, you know, the problems they present with where do we get rid of them and all of that kind of stuff, and you're thinking a hybrid, now you've got all the exhaust and the fluids and all of that from a combustion engine along with the battery. So it's like a double whammy car. So either go hybrid or go electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. <laughs> Charles, that's the question. Yeah, I'm curious about the hybrids. Everyone said that the pickup is amazing on the oh, Alexa vehicle. Um, okay. What about the hybrids? Great, great. Um, that's a peppy car, isn't it? Very. Do you uh, do you ever drive James Volvo? Um, <laughs> I do. You know, um, I well, she had it before I got my Tesla, so I still drive it. But okay. we have that arrangement of we have the two. We're a two car family. I've got the Tesla. She's got the hybrid. So if we take a long trip together, we take her car because we don't have to worry about. We could just go to the gas station. Right. But um, it's peppy. It's peppy. It's it's it. Oh yeah. no, her car is plenty, plenty peppy. Okay. And then that's your thing. We only take the Prius if the dogs are gone, because I don't let the dogs in the test. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it has the dog setting. <laughs> <laughs> They're her thing. <laughs> and so if we're going someplace with the dogs, we take that. But anywhere else, we will take the Tesla because I'm not afraid to get off at the Braintree Plaza and charge our yeah. the bridge and charge or whatever. I, the charging isn't an issue for me at all. And that being said, the dog is allowed in both of our cars. <laughs> <laughs> and there's plenty of room for the I, I can put many dogs in that. <laughs> um, so what's recently come to my attention is this concept that if you lose electricity in your home, you can plug into your electric car and feed your house. Um, yeah, and, uh, some, some, but, but the Rivian has that feature, and I think the F-150 has, yeah. has yeah. that feature. Yeah. I did want to say something about putting a charge at your house. Um, one is, is, first of all, there are incentives for that in the Biden bill, so you can get up to $1,000, um, I think, 30% um, uh, of the cost up to $1,000 for the home charging station. Um, and what is the cost? Is that now? Yeah. Okay. I've got and, a receipt. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking the same Well, thing. so I put one in my house and I bought the box myself, so I didn't have the electrician buy the box, I bought the box. And that was uh, $400. They've come down in price. My recommendation also is you can get boxes that have all these bells and whistles like their Wi Fi connect and all that. Don't do that because the car has all of that stuff in it. And so, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wish I had a remote because I'd like to be able to. I'd like to not have to leave the house to see how. You can do how that with your, your phone app. Right? The phone app. I think I can. Um, yeah. um, with the VW and 
the chairs are on the wall. I bought the Tesla one, and the electrician wasn't finished, so I ran the wire and I hooked it up. And <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Can you put them on? Are you licensed electrician? No, I, it was all inspected, and he did the final connection to the breakers and checked it all out. It was fine. Um, but that that little unit isn't the charger. That is just the supply. The chargers are in the car. Um, so I don't think most people know that. That's just a, a supply to um, the car, which chargers. And, and I would love to say one, one thing about getting chargers installed. Um, you know, if you're building a new house, it's great, because you can run the wires at the time. They're wiring up the whole house. But if you're adding it in, you have to make sure that your panel can accept it, because it's about the same draw as a dryer. Right. Right. You got. And you may have to get a sub panel in. Um, to uh, be able to, it depends on how full your pen is, is my understanding. But it's yeah, still kind of my garage, because I wanted to plug in a garage. So. Yeah, but if, you know, like if you're adding it to this, like if I had to add one, I don't have a garage, and I, my panel is on the opposite side of the house from the driveway. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to get, I would have to run a line over mm -hmm. and get the hardware, and I'm not sure if this room on my panel, I'd have to take the other thing, time? yes, the other thing you have to pay attention to is when you buy the box, they're all rated to certain amperages, yeah. and the higher the amperage of the box, the faster it's going to charge. And so, for example, I wrote this down, um, a 40 amp charger, which you need a 50 amp breaker for, will charge 25 miles per hour. Um, but if you get a 16 amp, it only charges 10 to 12 miles per hour. So you have to pay attention to that as well, because if you're going to be needing it to charge faster, you're going to need to install a charger that can also charge faster. So there are all these little details that you have to pay attention to. So my garage is also a workshop in the back, and so we put 100 amp service into the garage, and we had it pretty full by the time we decided on this. So we got the smaller breakers. You can get double little mm -hmm. ones for like the lights and things like that that didn't need. Um, and then it's two 60 amp breakers for the Tesla charger that I have, which gives me 48 amps an hour. And so a full charge would take like five hours. But I have it on off peak charging. So on my phone, I schedule it and it charges at one in the morning. So it's never charging when you're using any of the other electricity anyway. And I always, I charge it off the roof. So. <coughs> Another question, which I understand that you guys as owners may not have an answer to, but I wonder if you've heard anything about it, which is that it seems to me like as all these vehicles are going, transforming into electric, we actually have an opportunity to kind of like completely change the way we drive and, you know, give up the SUVs and the pickup trucks and the heavier, heavier weight and to have everybody drive like and be driving cars that are sort of for one person, you know, have an option like that and use highways differently. And I know when I'm coming to Boston, there's hardly anybody in the commuter rail, the, you know, multiple passenger rail. Uh, um, it took me. Yes, yeah. thank you. And all these cars have one person in them for a huge car making their way, you know, commuting. And, um, and, and that also, to me, has implications for this idea that we're, we're going to need to extract all these minerals for the batteries. And, you know, like, conservation doesn't seem to be part of the message. The message all seems to be convert. So I just wondered if you could... Well, there is magic, sort of a magic number when you're driving an electric, most electric cars. If you start going over 50 miles an hour, you're going to use your range up a lot faster. So I just I set my my um, cruise control at fifty. Oh, well, I never go. <laughs> well, with Pennsylvania Turnpike, it's the, it's the speed limit is seventy, and most of the people passing. Well, that's nine so to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings up just a real quick one. That brings up a good point too. If you're thinking about these, they are at least right now good for a place like the Cape, where you're doing a lot of shorting. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, like I have to drive to Hyannis or Orleans to run errands. That's sort of the, I believe, the ideal use for an electric vehicle right now, is those shorter trips, especially if you're in a hybrid, I think. I would think the chambers of commerce out here would be really pushing for fast chargers, because if you're a vacationer, you know, yeah. you're not going to want to say, well, there you go. <laughs> eight hours, yes, to charge so we're working car. on working with the businesses and the chamber of commerce. We have uh, sent out a news announcement about this to them. But I really believe that the way to do this is one-on-one, -on -one, you go knock on the door to each business that begins. Well, it cost about $50,000 $50, to put a fast charge. Yeah, so we met with the big businesses to, to really try to incentivize their business to um, install. And so and as of this moment, Truman is beginning installing four charging stations. Mm -hmm. It was a cost. And that's where Becca has worked fast. That was one of my... <laughs> Uh, yes, George. There was something I can't remember if I read it or heard it, but that Tesla has a contract now with the U.S. government from the, the, the name of it, but the, the bill that you know the infrastructure kind of stuff. Um, and I think I don't remember if it's by the beginning or end of 2024. They're supposed to put in a ton of universal chargers, and I think it'll be well, in various businesses. I heard they were going to uh, offer an adapter for sale. So that the whole time other cars could, could use the test of charge. Yeah, that's supposed to happen anyway, but and I guess the ones that they got the contract for they can't test you for Tesla cars. So when I'm running when I'm running out of range, I don't care if I have to pay more. <laughs> <laughs> one one of the things that and this is I think getting at you know, we live in a small town. And so I said to my neighbors when I put my charging station in, I said, because some of them are part timers, some of them are full timers, they have visitors, and I said, listen. If you have people visiting you who have an electric car, they can use my charger. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I made that available to my neighbors as a way, you know, maybe if their friends are thinking about driving their electric car or not, they would know that there was a charger in the neighborhood. Now, hopefully, people won't use that too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They'll be on the internet. So, uh, I figured that's yeah. you know that's what we have to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah
It took me two hours. I got a charger at 240. And it now takes me two hours to charge, where before it was an overnight conversation. Are the chargers, all the chargers talking about a rebate or a yeah, I think it's the, the bill allows for any charger. I don't think it has to be. And oh, the one thing I forgot to say, which is important, is it's only for low income areas and rural areas. And so we are a rural area. They can sort of charge for Yeah. 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 I mentioned a couple of things going on around electric vehicles on the Cape. There's an organization called Re, uh, Recharge Massachusetts, um, and it's got, I look at it as a two-pillar organization. One pillar is dedicated to uh, organizing local events in areas on, in the state where people can come uh, to see electric cars hybrids, learn how to plug it in, ask questions of, of experts. And we, uh, actually the outer Cape Towns, have been working on this to have residents also pick up residents and drive them in their electric car to Hyannis to learn more. And there'll be tables that'll have sponsors all over the Cape doing things, probably even solar panels or something. So it's called Recharge MA, and it's a big kind of event. It's on June 3rd. So I want to make sure that these guys know and can spread the word that they would like to host their car and take a couple of residents down to Hyannis on June 3rd. It's a Saturday. Um, that we can certainly start spreading the word. If you know people who have electric vehicles, um, the idea is to converge there and talk to people who know more about it and experience what it's like to drive. I can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing, and so that's so there is you can go to Recharge MA. We have a QR code I think for that up front of the information if you're interested. Um, but we, there's also a symposium happening in Boston on April 12th that will bring a lot of the leaders in the state together to talk about where we're at with charging stations and electric vehicles, which I think would be pretty exciting. And Truro um, will be receiving an, an acknowledgement. Many organizations are supporting Recharge MA. Even though Truro's town officially only has one, the town hall, and, our, and an employee used to park there until I went and said something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so um, we know that the town will be installing, uh, I don't know how many more, a handful more during this coming year or two. So it really is a push to get Truro's visibility to, uh, to this event and receive an acknowledgement for what Truro is doing. Not only the town, but now I can say a business is going to, to have some targets. So it's an incredibly slow process, but it's effective. Yes. Can I add, just yeah. from the point of view of the town of Truro, um, so we met with um, Jared Sproul, who's the director of the DPW, and he's responsible for the big purchases in town, and also for putting together the capital improvement project. So he sat down with the climate action committee several times to review the budget. And I, I just, I'm thrilled because he's very sensitive to trying to get electric vehicles anytime yeah. we can. So there's a feasibility thing there where they're not going to wait to get a necessary vehicle until they can get it in electric form or get the best they can at the time. But um, was it last year or the year before we got um, an elect a hybrid at the police station? Um, and I, as far as I know, they're pretty happy with it. And so the replacement of vehicles happens, you know, over time and it's scattered. But he's very focused on always trying to go with the electric or hybrid. Yeah. Um, so that goes right into the budget. Then. They'll need they'll need their best cars to, to catch the electric cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> they're much faster. Um, so I just want to kind of give a plug for him because he is very aware of it um, and and does in all the projects that they consider are trying to go as green as possible. It's difficult because all of this is so new and there's funding all over the place and we're changing periodically.
but um, he's, I believe, is budgeted, uh, well, proposed in the upcoming budget that we vote on at the um, next annual town meeting. I believe in that budget there's some more chargers. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out, I think, the best places to situate them. The library. I think the library is <laughs> always on the list. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think the library is one of them. Um, but anyway, I just want to let you know um, it, it happens at all levels. So you folks are great because you're here as individuals taking responsibility and being curious, which is wonderful. Um, and the town is working it too for the, you know, at that other level. So um, I just want you to be aware. Well, I hope that the they're putting in the fast charges because the slow ones are going to be parked there for 10 hours and right. that is the challenge is that people yeah. level two is yeah it's, it's a difference of between are level two is the fast no oh they're the slow they're the middle they're, they're i middle. mean that's it's 10 hours but the difference the difference so is tens of thousands of dollars yes yeah. yeah. fast charges are very expensive but the yeah. other ones are going to be useless for people mm -hmm. well that's well, why i think well i think not think about this hard 10 hours at the library yeah. Well, it depends again because it's just like the home charger. There's some level twos mm -hmm. that charge in four hours, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's some level twos that charge in ten hours. So yeah. I think again, that's like charge point has a variety of them. There are all these different. Mm -hmm. EV Go is another one. So it it really is unique to each charger how long it's going to take. Oh, you. Plus, yeah. plus, is it a matter of managing your battery, like topping off as opposed to starting from zero? Is that I'm kind of correct? Like you could bring your car when it's halfway and charge just the difference, and then you can take this long enough slow charger. Or is that not possible? after eighty percent? It's slow. It's it gets charges much more slowly. I see. So you really okay? But you don't want it to go more than eighty percent, do you? Not too often. I mean, yeah. going on a long trip, right? Oh, um, so you need to try to keep it consciously to like eighty percent. Well, it has a setting on the battery to stop it at 80%. And if you want to go above by 80%, you have to change, change, the, change setting. the setting. You mean charge it higher than 80%? Yeah. Okay. It, so if you go to Boston, you might want to charge to 100 Yeah. It, they recommend that for the most part, you charge only to 80%. It creates a longer life for your battery. Oh, I see. So, Just like a power tool. <laughs> So how much does it cost to install at home fast charging? Well, the unit itself for Tesla is 500 And then, like I said, then it's just the electrical cost. Mine isn't 500 You have to get a box. box. Get the wiring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put in a, a plug that is just going to be for that, and it's a higher voltage plug. Yeah. Oh, no, mine is directly wired from the box to the back of this charger. Yeah. Yeah, but we put like uh, Gerald put in the Yeah, that is. Oh, it was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Don't why did you run the answer is what the exact cost because what is your electrician charge? Yeah. How far away are right. from your well, box? Yeah. Is what you are what is your electrician charge? How far away from your box is where your charger is going to be? Right. What kind of charger equipment are you buying? Is the electrician buying? And Paul has a great example earlier about you bought it and it saved you a lot of money rather than going through the electrician. So we can give you some ideas, but I don't know what the going rate for electrician is right now. But I, yeah, but I also think that superchargers are or are ones that can charge you in like twenty to thirty-five minutes. Those are not available for home use uh, because it requires. Uh, you know, 240 <laughs> amps. Yeah. yeah. So it's you're they're all gonna be level two chargers at, at home. But again, if you have a higher amperage, it's gonna reduce the amount of time. And that depends on the breakers that you use. Um because you you could have done two fifties and then you would only get forty amps per hour. So I did two sixties and get the max the forty eight amps an hour. So um yeah that that but, depends on what you can put yeah. in the box. But you don't really need a supercharger at home because you know at night you just plug it in. Yeah. And so when you're sleeping, it's it's doing its business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> if there aren't any other questions, I just thought there's snacks and fruit, and we can mingle with our experts here. Thank you, Tom. Um,